Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about for loops. So it's often the case inside of our programs that we want to perform some action multiple times. So for example, we may want to add some numbers over and over, or we may want to say print something out to the screen multiple times. Now, the way that we do this inside of programming is through loops, right? And we solve many of our problems with loops. So for example, uh, something like matrix multiplication, um, the way that we typically solve this when we're programming, um, you know, a program that does this is by creating some loops that will iterate over the rows and the columns of our matrices, multiply the elements together and add up those partial sums, right? To get a result. So we solve many of our problems with loops and breaking them down into these smaller components that we solve in each iteration. Now, one of the common types of loops that we're going to be looking at today is the for loop. And we're going to be looking at a couple different flavors here, kind of our, our, our C style for loops, and then our C++ range based for loops. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, we'll go ahead and create a new source file called for.cpp. And inside of here, we can of course start um, with a main function, right? The core of our C++ programs. Now, let's say that we want to print some string out multiple times, right? And we don't want to have to write std c out over and over and over again. So we'll go ahead and include IO string because we want to use std c out. And then we can go ahead and get into our for loop, which we'll be using to, you know, you know runs this line of code, the std c out multiple times. So on the right hand side of the screen here, I have the CPP reference page for um, our for loops up. But as you can see, it's it's fairly dense and it can be a little bit tricky to get through um, if it's your first time reading this style of documentation. So um, we'll go ahead and try to distill this down to kind of you know what the core of these for loops are um, or is, and uh, you know see how we can use kind of the common case of these for loops. But I'll, I'll link this documentation down below if you want to learn more. Now our for loops, of course, start with the keyword for, right? followed by some parentheses. And it's inside these parentheses where we really do a lot of our work, right? Inside of these parentheses, we're going to set the bounds for our loop, basically how many iterations we want to perform. So the first statement that goes into these parens is typically the initialization of some sort of variable. So we'll do something like int i is equal to zero, right? Where i will be some sort of loop counter or some variable that will dictate, say, what iteration of the loop that we're on. So oftentimes you'll see you know, a variable name like i or j or k, um, and oftentimes it'll be iterated, uh, it'll be initialized to zero rather, right? We're starting from zero and incrementing it and going up to some value before stopping. But it doesn't have to you know, start at zero. It could really start at whatever value. It could start at some high value, and we could be subtracting and going down to zero, right? Just depends on what we need from our loop. So again, we start off with some initialization of say a loop variable. Now, after that, we put some sort of condition to say, you know, when should we execute our loop? So for example, in this case, we might write something like i is less than five. Now, all this statement is saying is that we're going to keep executing our loop while this condition is true, while i is less than five. So every single iteration of the loop, before we execute any of our, um, our loop code, we're going to make sure that this condition is true. If it's true, we'll execute the code in our loop. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and break out of our loop and return zero in this case. Now, the last thing that we have inside of these prints is typically some sort of update for our loop variable, right? So right now, i is equal to zero, um, and each iteration of the loop, we may want to increment it by some value. So we may want to do something like i is equal to um, i plus one. So we're just going to add one to i on every single iteration of the loop, at the end of the loop, that is. Um, we can also rewrite this in a couple different ways. So we can do something like i plus equals one, that's equivalent. Um, and then there's also these things called uh, post increment and pre increment, which are slightly different in their meaning. Um, but in this case, we're really just adding one to i. So we'll just leave it as this i plus equals one uh, for simplicity. So that's how we kind of dictate um, how many iterations our loop will run. So, you know, before a loop starts, we'll initialize i to zero. Then on every iteration of our loop at the very beginning, we'll make sure this condition is true, i is less than five. And at the end of every iteration of our loop, we'll run this um, update code. So we'll 
we'll say increment i by one in this case. Now, just like our, for, uh, our if statements, right, and else statements, we can uh, create a block of code here with these curly brackets. So this is what we're going to be executing every single iteration of our loop. So in this case, maybe we just want to do a simple printout using std cout, and we'll just print out the iteration number or whatever our loop counter says. So we'll print iteration and then our loop counter, i, and then a new line character so that everything gets printed to a new line. And that's kind of the basics of how we write these for loops. We lay out some conditions for when we want to execute our loop, then the code that we want to execute every iteration could be one statement, could be multiple statements, really whatever we need. And then after a loop finishes, in this case, we'll return zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and compile our program. So we'll run G++ on 4.cpp and call our output executable, 4 in this case. And we can go ahead and run our loop. And you can see we get our five printouts here. So initially I is zero, we print out iteration zero. At the end of that loop, I, um, you know, gets uh, one added to it, I gets incremented. So in the next iteration, I is one, then two, then three, then four. Then at the end of this last iteration right here, I gets incremented again to five. And because it's equal to five, we end up failing this condition, right? This condition returns false. I is no longer less than five. So we stop executing our loop and we just return zero. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how we write these uh, C style for loops here. So as you can see, um, you know, a bit from the, uh, you know, this reference page here, um, there's lots of optional things that we can choose. So we don't need to include every single one of these uh, statements inside of our for loop. Um, but this is kind of the most common case you'll end up seeing, right? The case where we're say creating some sort of loop counter, checking some condition and then incrementing or decrementing our loop counter. Okay, so now that we've gone over kind of our base for loop and the C style for loop, we can talk a bit about our range based for loop, which is just another style of for loop that we have. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here and we'll create a new file called say range 4cpp And inside of here, you know, we'll just quickly write a main function, right? Okay, so let's talk about um, our range based for loop here. So as it says kind of in the documentation from CPP reference, again, I'll, I'll put all this documentation below the video. It says um, our range based for loop is built to be um, a more readable equivalent of our traditional for loop. And what it's used for is operating over a range of values such as all elements in a container. So the place where we often use our range based for loop is with our STL or standard template library containers. So something like our std array, right? And it's really nice for iterating over these containers, right? And it makes it a bit more simple and expressive. So instead of having to worry about, say, some sort of loop counter, a condition, and some uh, increment or maybe decrement of a variable, we can just say, I want to iterate over the values in a container, right? Makes things pretty simple. So let's see how we can print out, say, the values of a std array using this range-based for loop syntax. So because we're using an array and we want to do some printing, we'll put some include statements up here for our array and for um, IO stream so we can do some printing. And then inside of our uh, main function, we can create a std array. So here we'll create a std array of integers and maybe we'll put say five integers in this array. And we'll just call it my array. And we'll set it equal to some values here doesn't really matter what they are. So maybe 42, 12, 63, one, and maybe three. So there's our five values that we want to print out. Now from here, we'll write our for loop. So we want to iterate over this array. Now we could of course just use a normal C style array, create some loop counter I, set it equal to zero, um, make sure that um, on every single iteration that i is less than the size of our array, so we're indexing into a valid index, um, and then increment i every iteration of the loop, and inside of our loop body, just index into my array to extract a value. So either using those, um, those bracket operators or using the at method. Um, so we could do that, or we could use a range-based for loop. So for example here, um, we write four with our parens, 
But instead of having, say, you know, those loop counters and stuff, we can say what value we want to extract. So we want to extract some integer from our array um, that we'll just call value. And then we'll do a colon and then the range we want to extract that value from. So my array in this case. And then we can create um, this little code block here with these curly brackets. And we can say print out whatever that value is with a new line character afterwards. Right, so this would be equivalent to that other kind of loop that I talked about where we would you know, maintain some sort of loop counter index into our array to extract some value and then print it out. But in this case, we can be a bit more expressive with a range-based for loop. We can just say, I want to extract my integer values from my array. So every iteration of the loop will extract one value from our array. So, you know, we'll extract 42, then 12, then 63, then one, then three. And on each iteration, we'll just print out that value here. So it's a, a, a lot more simple than our other loop, right? It's a bit more expressive too. And it even helps us prevent uh, one of the most common types of errors that we have in programming, which is this thing called an off by one error. You know, an off by one error is just this general class of errors where uh, it can be easy to make a mistake when we're writing things like loops. So maybe we run one iteration too many or one iteration uh, too few because we messed something up with um, say our loop range right inside of those statements. So maybe we, you know, iterated over six elements when we meant to iterate over five or four elements when we meant to iterate over five. But that can't happen with a range based for loop, right? Um, because we, we're never even getting given the option to control how many uh, elements we're iterating over. We're just iterating over the contents of my array. My array knows how big it is. So we don't need to do any kind of checks there. The compiler takes care of all of this for us. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, save this and we'll go ahead and compile this ranged for .cpp and call our output something like ranged for. Uh, let's go ahead and change that ranged for and we'll remove this uh, ranged hour. So now that we have our executable, we can go ahead and run it. And you can see when we run this code, we get all of our elements from our array without having to do any kind of indexing or maintaining any kind of loop counters. So, you know, this range based for loop is, you know, again, this idea of syntactic sugar, it's a way to do something, you know, equivalent to our C style for loops, um, without ha without incurring any of that extra, you know, manual labor of you know, writing out, um, those different conditions and potentially making a mistake. And we can be more expressive about our code, right? We can say, we just want to iterate over the values in this range. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for today. The basics on some of the for loops that we have in C++, our C style for loops um, and our range based for loops. An important thing to note is that both are often used in C++ programs. For example, um, we're not always iterating over, you know, a container. So we might, st so there's often cases where we need this C style for loop as well, right? Uh, we don't have a range of values to iterate over. Okay. But like I said, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, you can find this and any of my other examples on github.com slash coffee before arch. As always, I'm Nick and hope you have a nice day.